So I talk about this item a lot and there's good reason for that. I also get a lot of compliments on it and I thought having owned it now for over a year, it was time that I sat down, gave you a little bit more intel. Hello, 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 and the warmest of welcome to today's video. For those of you who haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Nick, fab to have you here. For those of you who have seen my face before, thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you enjoy my videos. I put out videos roughly three times a week on a range of different topics, anywhere from fashion, slightly more personal topics. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then please do head down, hit subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. I love chatting with you all. I'm on about living life loud, and what that means to me is being your authentic self, being proud to be you and just celebrating who you are. Celebrate yourself and of course, celebrating others. So super quick and random question. Obviously as YouTubers, a lot of us have our intros. We have um, kind of the phrases that we like to say. Do you like it when that is exactly the intro or do you like it when it's mixed in throughout the video from time to time? So if it's a top five bags, you know, you'll get straight into it, but then a bag two that's when they'll do the intro what do you think do you like it when it's mixed up do you like the fact that it's a it's kind of well-known format what's your preference let me know because i'll happily mix anything up if that's what you all prefer but i've just seen a few youtubers that mix them in i think that's interesting so i wanted to ask you the audience the question anyway what are we talking about today we are talking about my Aspen Love London, London tote. Now, I wasn't planning on filming this today, but I'm using this as my bag of the day. And I thought, do you know what? I've owned it for a little over a year now, 13 months. And it's probably time that I spoke about it in a little bit more depth again. Um, I've done a few videos on this. I think I did a six month review, but I always find these really interesting because it's good to see how someone can t consistently gets on with a bag, particularly after the honeymoon's over with it. Um, you know, it's not new and shiny anymore. Other things have come in. Are you still loving it? Are you still using it? What's the wear and tear like? All of that stuff. And I feel very well equipped to comment on this bag because I use this bag a significant amount. So it's been used 50, 60, 70 times. So when I'm talking about things like wear and tear, I can talk about it. It's gone into the office. It's been taken on sort of work trips with me. It goes in the car. It's just something that's been here, there and everywhere. So the one that I will talk about in more depth is my Chuck Hill Blue, which I have here. I do also have the T-Rose Pebble, which many of you will be familiar with, but I've not owned that for as long. I bought that in January of this year. Um, and I bought this one of July of last year. So this is the Aspen of London, London Tote. And this is in the largest size that you can purchase this in. This is what I believe is a 43 centimeter bag on the base. It is a very, very significant bag. It is top handle, but it does have slightly longer shoulders. So you could potentially get that over. I don't and can't, and I wear a lot of jackets. But if I was just wearing a t-shirt, this would go over my shoulder. I think on a handful of occasions, I've thrown it over my shoulder just because I needed to be hands-free for a moment and it's good for that. Like I said, it's a very large bag. I think this is one of the best work bags that you can buy um, if you're someone who uses like laptops, takes large notebooks. If you have a lot of stuff to carry, I think this is a really good bag. It's very comfortable, it's very practical really really enjoy it so this bag is incredibly classic i would say in terms of its style and its shape but it's incredibly incredibly practical so on the interior of this bag and i will insert some footage that shows the interior a little bit better than you might be able to see here you have two main compartments that are divided by a zipped divider which acts as a pocket in itself you have two pockets on the front of the bag and then you have a zip a large zip pocket on the back of the bag as well as you can see this has my stuff in it in here i have a 15.6 inch laptop in a case and that very easily just slots in the back there and then is flush to the top of the bag 
This bag does not have a zipper. That is something that you have to be aware of and that's something that you need to be okay with if you buy this bag, okay? Um, so it does not have a zipper. What I do tend to find though is when I'm carrying it, because of how the handles are, it does tend to pinch in. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried. The, my main thing is about rain. A lot of people talk about things like um, stuff being removed from your bag. I've not experienced that, you know, touch wood, I don't. Um, but the main thing for me is rain. Um, but I don't tend to find that as an issue. Um, and if I did, I it's in, I'm just looking at it, it's in my um, black mulberry base water, but I do also have a raincoat for my bags. So if I'm taking this out into the city, and especially somewhere like London, I like to walk wherever I'm going to. I try and, you know, get the steps in if I can. Um, I'll just take that with me just in case um, I need it. Um, but it doesn't have a zipper. But I would say that is possibly the only drawback of this particular bag. It is incredibly, incredibly practical. Those two pockets are so um, capacious. You've got this interior pocket here as well which has significant amount of room for papers, documents, a small iPad, your phone. If there are particular things you want to zip away, you can zip them in that compartment. You just won't be able to zip everything, if that makes sense. So if there are valuables you're particularly concerned about, if there are things that you're particularly concerned about getting wet, etc., zip them away. There are two zipped pockets. There's one on the back, there's one in the centre. There is still the opportunity to zip things away. Then you have these two pockets on the front. They're great for a phone. My compact mirror is often in there or a fragrance or my um, sunglasses case. If I'm using a soft sided sunglasses case, that can slot in there. You've got so much space. I mean, here I'm using cosmetics cases, a long wallet, a compact umbrella, a pencil case, my keys, my sunglasses, my AirPods. I mean, look at all of that. And this bag isn't even nearly full. Oh, and because this will make all the difference, a stick of gum. That'll make all the difference to a capacity. Well, I mean, it would if you were using something like a Jacquemus Le Chiquito, wouldn't it? So, super duper practical. Um, I love the shape. I find it a very easy shape to manage and style and carry. It's very comfortable against the body. If you do put it on your shoulder, it sits very flat against you as well. So it's quite easy to rest your arm on it. I don't worry about misshaping it. Mine isn't misshapen at all, at all. Something I should have said when I was saying about the closure is that it does have this um, closure here, which is the magnet. It's not the strongest of magnets. Um, but it depends how full the bag is. If you've not got a huge amount in it, it is quite a strong um, magnetic closure. Um, if it's if you've got a fair amount of stuff in it and it's straining a bit, it's not all that strong. But yeah, I thought I'd just mention that. Um, but it's really beautiful. It's a great shape. I love the little details. So different London totes have different um, bag charms. So mine has the shields um, on it. You can get the A and um, the A with the bumblebee as well, which I've spoken about wanting. I've put a little bit of a scarf on mine just to add a little bit of texture, a little bit of dimension, bring a, um, a couple of different colours into it. It's got gold hardware. The interior is a champagne gold. This interior, I've been asked a few times, what do I think of it? Because a lot of people don't perceive it as being particularly luxurious. Um, it's probably easier to show you. Yeah, I can show you on this one. Let me take the receipts out. Excuse my Minnie Mouse Pez machine. But here, so there you go. You can see it in there. It's like this gold. It almost feels a little bit like a nylon. I like the champagne gold. I think it's a beautiful colour. Um, there we go. Um, it's a beautiful colour. It's white clean. It's super easy. It's super practical. That's what I'm looking for. I don't need those fabric interiors. I don't need the suede and the felts and the things that can mark and the things that can get damaged and the things that can stain and the things that can ultimately, if something gets caught in it, can smell. I don't need that. I need something inside my bag that's super duper practical. I don't need to put my hand in there and go, oh, doesn't that feel luxurious? No, the bag just needs to look beautiful and on the interior needs to be practical as anything. That's what it's there for, ultimately. I'm carrying a bag 
firstly because I want to look chic um, but secondly because I have stuff to carry if I don't have anything to carry I'm not carrying a bag so that's that so I do find the interior of this really useful really practical you can buy these in so many different variations so many different colors they bring out a lot of seasonal colors there are a lot of neutrals but then occasionally there are some really beautiful kind of brighter colors that will enter the collection at the moment you've got woven leather you've got the beautiful pool blue there have been mock croc versions over the years stunning stunning um price point price point i have snagged such great deals with mine but i think they're worth every penny full price i just happen to know that they do drop so i'm, I'm prepared to wait for that sometimes but i paid 200 pounds a piece amazing these were 650 rrp i got them double discounted in the sale or even triple discounted potentially 200 pounds insane like insane deals they quite often go 650 to 325 and then down to 195 I waited I missed out on this one um, and then I was informed that it was available again and I took my chance this one I didn't wait as soon as I saw it hit 200 bought no regrets love 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 stunning bags so let's quickly talk wear and tear so for mine the glazing is all in really good condition stitches look perfect it's got feet on the bottom and I mean, I'm not shy with my bags. They go on the floor, they go on the pavement. Like I'm not shy and there is minimal, minimal wear. I'm not even sure, I'm not even sure I could say there is corner wear. In all honesty, no wearing on the glazing, no wearing on the hardware. Everything's super shiny. Mine's in great condition on the interior. You know, things can happen, obviously a pen can leak, all that kind of stuff. But I also try and compartmentalize my bag so I avoid stuff like that. But even if that happened, that's fine. But that wouldn't be the fault of the bag. In terms of the way that they have made this bag, they have made it impeccably. Mine is really, really holding up beautifully. This one's very much the same. And they get used so much. And like I said, I'm not shy with them. And this bag is packed. This gets used. It's fabulous. Fabulous. Honestly, I can't recommend them enough. If you get the chance to own one, genuinely, and you're a big bag person, obviously, if you love little bags, like if you are if you consider, you know, a Chanel medium flap to be a big bag, this won't be for you unless you have a very specific purpose for it. For me, the purpose is work. If I'm using a big bag as my day in, day out, quite often my Mulberry Bays waters tend to fit that bill or my Longchamp Les Pliages, like that tends to be my more casual day daily bag but for work oh these two these two absolutely smash it i have to say they are fabulous so if you're looking for a beautiful chic work bag that's top handle that can carry all of your essentials and more this is a great one in terms of competitive products i would say the things that are most closely um competitive to it would be the longchamp rousseau in the extra large um, and also there is a bag from Smithson, Smithson, um, which I have seen advertised a fair amount and it's £895. I'll put it in here. I would say that is possibly, um, one of the closer, um, one of the closer competitors to it. And then of course, from a, you know, Chanel Hermes perspective, the Garden Party. I don't know if they still produce the Garden Party, um, but you can definitely buy them pre-loved. But I would say in terms of shape, that is something that's quite similar. So here's a Rousseau, you know, as a point of as a point of comparison. That can obviously unpop her. Mine is poppered. Um, but I would say that the Smithson, which I can't recall the name of, but I'll have inserted the footage of it, and then the Garden Party if you're looking for like an Hermes. However, for the price point of these, this one I think is now 675 RRP. The Rousseau's are around 500. The Smithson is 895. So quick correction here, a Rousseau is 445 in the leather. My one would have been about 500 RRP. Um, the Smithsons, you have the East West tote bag, which is 850, not 895. And then you also have the Day tote bag, which is 1095. A garden party would set you back 
you know, two, three grand. So if you're really looking for something that's a workhorse bag, that's super chic, sophisticated, beautiful, um, and is a really, really good price. Oh, that's a bit pointy. Um, that's a really good price and that will last you very, very well, honestly. This. What would I buy out of these two? This. This. This is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Very happy to own it. Would I own another one of these? I think I would. I think I would. But this. So good. So good. So there we have it, everyone. That was a, what I intended to be quick, but probably hasn't ended up being that quick, summary of the Aspen Love London London Toe. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much as always for watching. I look forward to seeing my next one. Take care, everyone. Bye now. Mwah.